spirit. It's everywhere. Are we able to communicate with them? What can they teach us? Welcome to School Through Spirit. Host Diet Rene is a certified psychic medium and master teacher of psychic and mediumship development through LWISSD. Diet was born knowing spirit and now is here to help you better understand the spirit world. Now, your host of School Through Spirit, Diet Rene. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Jeanette Renee with School Through Spirit here on WLTKDB.com. Um, just so you know, I'm looking a little tired. Why? Because I drove back from Ohio last night. Um, I was at an event all weekend um, in Ohio, Ohio, Columbus and drove back. Just wanted to make sure I made it here today instead of doing that on the road thing for you. Why? Because I have a few surprises. Um, but let's get back to the show because I kind of stopped short of that intro. So really this show, as everybody knows, is um, where I do explore different people's lives, um, their modalities, the spirituality, or just really how spirit has touched their lives or impacted them. Now I do always start with a small discussion and then we go on to somebody. And today I have got Miss Charlie Lynn with me. I am so excited. You don't even know. I'm beyond excited to have Miss Charlie Lynn. Um, so I am super happy, super, super happy. Um, and we're just going to really talk a lot about her, her journey. I mean, you've already talked to her once. Remember Chat with Charlie? But today, today, Chat with Charlie has always keeping her face hidden. Always. I don't know why, because she's gorgeous. Um, but today, she's going to show you her face. And uh, it's going to be super, super awesome to see that. Um, and I already know what she looks like. Now the world, I get to share her with the world. And I'm super excited about that. So right now, what I'm presently doing is share sharing everywhere because somebody once told me a few weeks ago that um, they were super excited when I started posting my show everywhere. Um, and one of these times, I'm going to Google myself how to share this to Instagram um, so that I can have it there. Um, you guys are going to have to let me know. Somebody's going to have to come in the discussion and say, hey, this is where I do it. Um, so this week, though, I really want to talk about that total surrender, guys, that total surrender. Now, I know I've talked about surrendering before, um, and it's surrendering your spirit and things of that nature. Um, and we've talked about that. We've talked about that, okay? Um, and in case you're listening, by the way, guys, I'm doing a reading show today. Good morning, Miss Jody. I missed you last night, Miss Jody. Um, so... We start sharing the show, guys, because that's one of your surprises. Not only are we going to meet Charlie, her face, but this is turning. Good morning, Miss Tara. This is turning into a reading show. So, you know, when I bring in psychics and mediums and we do, you know, we do one question readings. That's what we're doing today. I didn't advertise it that way. I advertised it as surprises, but hopefully everybody got my surprise and they're showing up. Good morning, Miss Denise. And uh, we're going to do it. We're going to rock star this. Okay. Um, so it's going to be super awesome. And I don't even know if I do let Charlie know we are going to do it. Cause you know what? She'll tell you, she'll tell you. I was her teacher. I was good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was, I was Charlie's teacher and I certified her and she'll tell you the biggest thing I do was surprise. This is what we're doing today. So today is Charlie's reading show day. Cause I want to share with the world how freaking amazing Charlie is. And I want you all to know along with me. How amazing she is okay um so we're gonna we're just gonna do a reading show just to, to show you that um i am like i said right now i'm trying to put this everywhere and anywhere so that you guys have it um and see what we could do i i just really want to explore this have fun so as i said everybody share 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 okay share 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 um share the page like my page share um the show good morning miss joe Joe, how do I put this on Instagram? You are always the one that does that. I can't even talk, talk right now. I need to figure out how to share this to Instagram, guys. And if anybody knows how to do this other than Joe, please let me know. Because <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling. You would think it'd be just a boop and here you go. But I'm struggling with it. So today we're going to be on Facebook. As I said, good morning, Miss Elise. I, Facebook, we are going to be everywhere else also. Um, we're not going to be on YouTube today. Why? Because the station got another strike. We're good for that. We don't know how to shut our mouths. 
Um, and we just kind of let things come out and that happens and YouTube doesn't always like it. So, um, so going back to the journey, guys, the journey and surrendering. And it's something I talk about quite often, especially in my class, it's a teaching. And I talk about that surrender to spirit. Okay. And as I talk about it, I'm talking about, you know, it's kind of like, let go, trust what you're getting, give what you get, total surrender into that. <clears throat> and so many, you know, I will tell you what, so many of my students get it. And it's so fabulous to see that journey. Well, this weekend, I was really blessed. Good morning, Miss Pamela. Um, I was really blessed to really experience a lot of different ways of surrendering or a lot of different amped up things of me for surrendering. Okay, a, a lot of things. And I was totally shocked that, you know, because I'm always preaching it. I'm always preaching that surrender thing. But surrendering to your journey is a whole, whole nother avenue. It's it's a whole nother avenue um, of going and a whole nother avenue of what to do. Because so many of us will sit there and go, um, yeah, I, I can do this. I can do this. But oh my God, we're terrified, aren't we? We are just terrified. Um, terrified to literally just go the distance, terrified to go, oh my God, um, what, where is this taking me? Terrified on all those different levels of what is going to happen. Um, I'm just trying to find any place else to share this. Guys, go ahead and share it on your pages. Do whatever. This is awesome. Um, but surrendering to the journey of where you're going to go within this, okay? That ends up being a really big part of where am I going to go in this? What am I supposed to do? Um, now that I've started this journey, what am I, you know, what, what, why, what is, what is the case of this? Good morning, Miss Jessica. And of course, more this worries about surrender. I love it. Um, and Je Jessica, they might be talking to you on this, but literally it's hard because I will tell you what, you know, I have been surrendering and surrendering and surrendering. <coughs> and for the longest time, um, up until this last week, I really did kind of think, Okay, well, I guess I'll do some readings at home, and I guess I'll do events. Good morning. Yes, Mr. I think that's correct. You're in the correct place now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and in that aspect of it. And, you know, I'll teach. And um, uncomfortable? Yes, it is. It very much is uncomfortable, Pamela. But surrendering to what you're supposed to do, surrendering to that life's journey, just allowing it to happen, and then kind of sitting back and going, oh, my God, what's this about? So like I said, you know, I'm I'm pretty darn good at what I do. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to say I'm the best of the best by any means, but, or that I'm 100% accurate all the time, because you know what, I'd be really blowing smoke up a lot of tushes on that one if I said that. Um, even more so if I believed it. But do I believe I'm pretty good? I do. But you know, you know, up until a little over a week ago, I was thinking that this was going to be my life. And I was totally okay with this. I was totally content, totally happy with having my clientele and doing some events and having the radio show and very much content and, and teaching and just exploring that and thoroughly happy with that. But as you know, guys, I've been working a lot with hypnotherapy and self-development to release fears, release fears. And through this releasing of fears, you know, spirit has really showed me a lot of things. And not only surrendering to the process of mediumship or psychic mediumship development, but also um, surrendering to literally just the journey. What is just, what is this journey supposed to be? Where am I supposed to go? How is this supposed to work? And really kind of getting out of the way of it. And that's, that's really hard to do because twofold, this is what happens. This is what happens twofold. Um, you want to control it. You got an idea of what you want to do and you want to control every step of it. And that's really not given spirit an ability to come in and kind of do it. And if they are, it might be really bumpy, you know, really bumpy. Lots of, you like my shirt, guys. I'm not about the size of the circle. It's about the loyalty in it. I love this shirt. Um, I love, love, love this shirt. Um, but it's, it's about the, why am I going back to loyalty? Um, it's really about, you know, getting on the way. And if you don't surrender to spirit on, on the journey itself, you're going to have a lot of bumps. You're going to feel, find a lot of struggle. You're going to find nothing goes smoothly. It just, it feels very bumpy, very like, oh my God, God, why do I feel just not put together today? But just, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's really not easy. Um, another way of surrendering is just really going, okay, I'm going to get out of this way. Good morning, Miss Tara. Again, I was wondering what I, what it said. Oh, well, there you go. Now you know. <clears throat> um, 
So the other thing is a lot, you know, kind of getting out of its way and just trusting the process, trusting the process and allowing it to flow and believing that it's okay and believing that this is part of your journey. This is where it's supposed to meant to be. And I'll tell you what, over the last week, week and a half, it's really been coming to light that um, my way of reading has been changing. It's been growing. It's been more dynamic. It's been more detail filled. Um, just truly amazing on that aspect. I'm trusting spirit a lot more. Um, I actually looked at a kind of client not that long ago and said, I'm sorry if you don't remember. I'm not trusting your memory, but I'm trusting your mom, you know, and it's learning to really trust in all that. So over this weekend, I had a lot of revelations that happened. And yeah, I was at this amazing event called Gift of Light down in Ohio. And during this period of time, you know, it was, it occurred to me that every, all the readers around me were doing what I used to do and used to do it, which, and, and probably will still do, but I call them speed readings, one after another, after another effort, 50 minutes, another person in your seat. <clears throat> and, um, I literally went, wow, is, is, you know, is this what you want me to do? And they gave me a beautiful answer because what would happen was I have a sign up sheet and nobody was using it. Like nobody was using my sign up sheet. And I'm like, God, that's really odd. But what was happening is somebody would come up to me and say, do you have a spot? Do you have an opening? I'd be like, yeah, go ahead and sit down. And I'd say, how long would you like? And of course they'd say 15 minutes. I'm like, okay. And we get down to about that 14 minute. They're like, can I sit for another 15? And I'd say, sure. And then it turned into a half an hour and they're like, can I sit for another 15? And there'd be nobody there. And I'd be like, sure, why not? And you know what? They would sit until they felt very complete, which was anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, 15 minutes for the reading. And then, you know, we do our pleasant release goodbyes and, you know, thanking them for allowing me to sit with them. And then they would get up and leave. And then the next person would show up and say, can I sit down with you? And I'd be like, yeah. And it blew me away because this happened both days, not just one day. It wasn't just a fluke. Both days it happened that way. And the clientele were just amazing. These weren't people that just wanted to know about relationships. They really wanted to know, you know, exactly what I love to do in a, in a psychic reading when I'm at home, when I'm at home and my clients call that, that very thought provoking, that very detailed orientated, that, that those readings that really help to change your life. And I was blown away and just like, wow, this is awesome. And it went, you know what? I had to sit back and look at the journey. I had to look at the process of the journey. And went, you know, when I'm getting out of the way of that journey, what is happening? The readings, even at events, are changing. Um, I'm doing things that are further and farther away from home. I'm trusting this process. I'm believing that, you know what, other people are trusting in me. I'm believing that other people, you know, see the worth of me, which is helping me to see the worth of myself. And again, then turning back to trusting spirit and trusting this journey. And that's not always easy to do. I, I will tell you what, that, at least that is exactly what I was reading with you is life, life changing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, everything. And it's just, it's amazing because you know, when you start this process, when you start on the process of spirit and you start the process, you know, I know like with myself when I teach it and I'm teaching all about surrender, I'm teaching you about surrendering to your life and I'm surrendering to spirit and that, that awful word that everybody goes, oh my God. And it's, it's really probably the hardest thing there is, is surrender just to get out of the way of it. You never realize that there's that extra tidbit that goes with it. And I know as soon as this, I've learned this and I finally went, okay, I'm out of the way of it. Take me where you want me to go. Help me to explore this journey. I know they're going to put something else in front of me to say, and what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And the whole process will be like, yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Awesome. Let, let's go. Let's go. You know, <clears throat> and it's pretty amazing. I'm also going to tell you that, um, you know, when you hear about, and this is kind of going back a little bit, you might hear on this journey, a whole lot of your guides speaking. And we don't always believe those, do we? We don't, we will hear them. We fight with them. We argue with them. We don't do what they say. We go, whatever. We treat them like they're our mothers. 
<clears throat> you know what? And we don't give them the respect possibly that they need. Um, and we kind of go on. And I will tell you what, part of this surrendering to journey is into your journey is also surrendering to when you do hear that information coming in. When you do feel it come in, whether you hear it or see it or know it or how it might be, understanding that. Now, I don't, I don't know if y'all remember, I mean, I'm sure you do, but um, I'd started the process of hypnosis um, a few months ago, two, three months ago. And it's totally amazing because in that process, I can remember them telling me, you know, a friend, Deb, who I, you know, I've sent a lot of people to, um, I'm saying, you know, Deb's one, what, what are you here for? And I went, I don't know, I quit smoking, I'm I'm in the process of losing weight. I'm in the process of getting healthier. I'm in this process. I'm in that process. I don't know. I think I just have a lot of fears I got to get over. And I don't even know what those are, but I just have a lot of fears. And we sat down, we talked. And it was really cool because before the hypnosis even happened, it was kind of like, I know why I was sitting with her. And I understood why spirit said, hey, you know what? Raise your hand when she asked for a volunteer because it's not something I would have done. It's particularly not with Deb because she's part of my past and not that she's a bad part of my past, but she's part of my past. That's something I don't like to look at, or at least did not like to look at. So spirit said, put your hand up. Spirit said, showed up. And I did show up. And on her end, she could have done it by phone. She could have done it by zoom, but she said, you need to show up. I'm hearing you have to, you have to face me. And it was really cool as we went on that journey together, because as we started to talk, we found out one of my biggest fears was to be seen. I was afraid how people would see me. I was afraid to stand up and say, oh my God, here I am. Oh my God, don't look at me. Oh my God, what are you going to think of me? Oh my God, this and that. Um, and it was a lot of perceptions I had of myself. Not so much of what anybody else thought of me. It was what I thought about myself. So I'd started that journey really with listening to spirit and surrendering to it. And I did not have a clue that when I took those first steps, that those are my first steps in this journey of surrendering into what is now becoming my life, a new life for me. Okay. Because through the process of hypnosis, I have released those fears. I've understood that it was that fear of what I felt about myself. Not the fear of, of being seen. It was people thinking as low about me as I was thinking of myself. And I realized that I wasn't exactly a bad person. And I realized that I could be seen. And I realized it was okay. And I no longer had to have the fear. And I thought that was all well and done and awesome. And then I'm starting to watch my life unfold. I'm watching things happen. I'm watching myself show up for my life. I'm hearing spirit say, do this. And I'm like, okay, let's go do this. And then another miraculous thing happened this weekend. Let me take a drink and I'll tell you about it. Oh, and by the way, y'all know how much of a Harry Potter fan I am, right? I'm also a Star Wars fan. And this is the, the um, Baby Yoda cup is stronger than you think. And that's why I had to, that's, I guess, why I had to, they told me to share it. So it's a Mandalorian cup and I, it's got Baby Yoda, um, which screwed up, I think his name is. It says stronger than you think. Pretty awesome, huh? Somebody need that message. But anyway, so the coolest thing happened this weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I literally sat down, I was about to do a reading and I had some flyers for a big event that's happening in, in Janesville, Wisconsin. Um, oh, thank you, Miss Jo. Um, and a lady came up and she looked at the flyer and she recognized Rob Thompson on the flyer. And she looked at him and she goes, you do paranormal, don't you? I'm like, well, you know, that's kind of a funny story because not notoriously, but spirit has been direct me towards paranormal. And I told her the story of the journey and everything else. And she literally looked at me and she goes, I thought I knew. I thought when I seen your face, I thought I knew who you were. I didn't know where, but she thought. And it turned out she had seen me, in, literally in a Zoom meeting part, uh, or she had seen me or heard of my name on the Ghost Finders. Um, and because she follows it and everything else. So I don't know if she's seen it on the, the episode that aired 
or she just seen me being advertised through them. But it was really kind of cool because she looked at him. She goes, I've been doing paranormal investigations for like 10 or 12 years now. I can't remember how long she said. And she just, I thought it was so cool that somebody recognized me. Now, it's not like it's a big fan thing or blah, blah, blah. But the fact that I went, wait a second, I'm over my fear of being seen. And that said, my energy was surrendering to this process. My energy is saying, it's okay. My energy is saying, let's go. I'm not going to fight this anymore. And it's pretty awesome when that happens because when that happens, you really do start to release those fears. You start to go, wait a second. And, and it was so funny because I was talking to a friend last night on this journey home from Ohio, which is, by the way, a seven-hour journey. And I had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to talk to friends because I didn't leave until after 6 o'clock Central, Central Time. But as I was journeying back, I literally had visions in my head of a brick and mortar and doing th a business and you know which is you know an office outside of this office my home office but an outside office and di doing different things within that and then doing more traveling and all this other stuff that was just coming to me like wow now that you're surrendering to this process look at what is going to happen this is what potentially could be life if you just surrender to us if <laughs> yes Dietrich, yes this is what can happen if you just surrender. And I thought, wow, that's really cool because it really made me think about my journey and how hard it's been to get to this point. Because I will tell you what, you see the rocks I got, right? This is one rock I got. I got some rocks, but I got a really cool skull over the weekend. Just this really cool skull. Okay. I mean, haven't worked with skulls before. Just I, I, I see the picture of him and me and him connected and so Maria Celeste, which you all know her, because um, she's been on here a couple of times, she found this guy over in Tucson, and she was like, I think you need him. And when I was there, it was so funny because I had to find the skull for me. And I had to find one that had an imperfection in his skull. I didn't want something perfectly round. Spirit was like, you don't need something perfectly round because you know what? I've been a two by four therapy thing when it comes to spirit, like two by four therapy, anything else. And my, my first skull had to have a spot that's flat as if it was getting hit in the head by a two by four. It understands my struggles. It understands my hardness to surrender to spirit and to surrender to the process. Hence fears, which is what I talked about last week. And it's pretty cool because when I started working with him, which I started working with him Friday, not why I started working him, you know, his energy, but then physically started working with him Friday night. And it made me realize I had all these fears that I just had to let go. Surrender, you know, surrendering because spirit has me. The good universe has me. God has me. This process has been laid out way before I ever, ever came to earth here. My life and what I'm supposed to do, just like your life and what you are supposed to do, is already there. It's not unknown to you. You just forgot. That's all you've done is forgotten. So now we have to learn the words like surrender and trust and have faith and release your fears on the premise that you forgot something as easy as you forgot your keys. Because trust me, it's all there in front of you. Your life is laid out. Yes, there's a lot of room for chance, but your life has been laid out for you. Okay? So take the time today, take the time this week to think about why it is you don't want to surrender, why it is that you want to sit back and have fears and hold on to those fears. What is it within you that says, you know what? I don't know how much, you know, where I can go with this or what I can do. And it doesn't matter if you're a psychic, a medium, if you're a detective, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, if you're the hamburger flipper at McDonald's. It really doesn't matter. Because trust me, every one of those occupations is crucial. And probably, especially the McDonald's burger flipper. Because I'll tell you what, America would starve of McDonald's if that guy wasn't doing his job. <clears throat> it probably gets paid way too less than he deserves. Hey, Sir Gordon. But take the time, please take the time to think about those fears. 
take the time to think about all of those things that you're not surrendering to, all those things that you're struggling with. All those things that you're like, wow, this can be <laughs> McDeed. <laughs> there you go. Gordon, I need to sit in McDonald's drive through and just do readings over the intercom. Like, would you like a fries and a, and a reading with that? I need to do that just for shits and giggles. <laughs> See how many people I could freak out. Um, but literally, you know, I want you to spend some time this week thinking about that. Like, where, where's this journey? Where's your journey taking you? Where are you going? Release the fears. Give up the two by four. Put it down. Burn it. Have a bonfire. <laughs> Gordon, I'm in. I bet you are. I'll take the intercom. You take the drive up window. We'll, we'll take team up. Um, on that note, we're going to take a few minutes here. Um, we're going to take a station break. And when we get back, hopefully Charlie will be here. Um, I'm sure she's in there listening someplace to me. So this is Jet Renee here on School Through Spirit with WLTKDB.com. Be back in a few. Looking to launch your new masterpiece? Then try something new with Moonbow Publishing and Production. At Moonbow, we have a strong desire to serve authors in a powerful and meaningful way. After all, you poured your heart and soul into your writing and we fully understand and respect that. Remember this, you will own the copyright to your work. You will have the final say on your work before being published. Even after all of that, we've saved the best for last. We won't take a percentage sold. Nope, not a penny. Excited about MoonbowPublications.com yet? We thought so. Take advantage of our company's services like book editing, formatting, and covers, publishing, and photography. Moonbow Publishing and Productions has everything you are looking for in a company. Remember, we will not keep any commissions. We are a boutique publishing company focusing on spiritual, health and wellness, and personal growth genres. Moonbow Publications and Productions, a new kind of publishing company. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Jet Renee here with School Through Spirit on WLTKDB. Uh, let's bring in Charlie. Oh my God, Deidre! I knew you'd show you. up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what I'm gonna do it yet. I was gonna do it, but here you go. You want your hat? I got. Love it. it. Yeah. Well, your mind spells this. Where if I can find it? Where is it at? Ah! It's got to have it here someplace. I'm totally ruining the effect of this, guys. Here we go. I love it. <laughs> Your hat's way cooler than mine. I'm here. I'm here. This is kind of like surrendering, right? Yeah, surrendering, darling. <laughs> it is so funny because the whole time, this is so funny because the whole time I'm doing this, I'm yeah, love Gordon's like, I love the hats. It is awesome, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so um, the whole time, it's so funny because the whole time I was talking about that, I was thinking about you and you already know I think about that with you all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, we're getting closer to a face, but it's too yeah. late. It's already it, on banner, darling. I know. So I really thought about doing like the paper bag, but it was like, that's so like the unknown comic. Like it's just not original. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. I know. Uh, my picture's already on, but you're, you're but everybody. This is Charlie introducing her to the world. It's funny too, because the whole time I, I, I know you already know I spent time with Maria this weekend Yes, um, and she is celestial. Uh, let me get I got gems by celestial dancers who Maria has. Um, and I got my, I got my skull just so you know, I love him in skull, here. You know what I mean? Loving him. I need to get a bigger skull. Oh my God. No, Maria just, has the best skulls, everybody. I'm telling you what she does. And I got a Ruby because Maria felt a mm -hmm. Ruby for me, which is really awesome. That is. It is. But this is the one that blew me away. And I don't even know why I had to have it, but I had to Ooh. have this. It's a black moonstone. And it's I'm very like, pretty. 
Why do I need this? And it's really funny because as I'm reading this, why while I was on break, like, why am I holding this? What is this about? You know what I mean? Right. Good morning, Miss Diane, which is my mom. Say good morning. Good morning to dad's mom. <laughs> um, the black moonstone or gray moonstone helps one to see beyond the veil, making it a powerful stone for the clairvoyant and shamans. New moon, the new moonstone helps one to see the wisdom of the ancient mystery schools, drawing one into the realm where all things exist, magnifies the manifestation of intentions, and brings forth the creation up from the void. I was like, this is really cool. And the whole time I've been talking, I've been doing this. You know what I mean? Awesome. So that's what I've been doing. Is my internet cutting out, guys, or is it Jody's? Just so everybody wants to. I didn't have issues when I was watching. Okay, good. I was, because mine happens to do it once in a while. It's just my energy. So, you know, I let Todd know this morning, and not everybody know. Good, Todd says it's all good. Awesome. Not everybody knows about this because you know, because I said when I put the banner up, I had a couple of surprises today. That's what I heard. One is Charlie's face. And she's going to talk more about her journey a little bit. The other is we're going to do readings today, guys. <laughs> I'm putting her on the spot. <laughs> if you could be here and like see just how much I'm like sweating. No. Like, it's just, it's bad. No. Like I told everybody, it's like being back in school with me. Back right. in class with that, me. I she's mean, not lying. I do that to you guys. Like, hey, guess what we're doing today? And you're like, no, we're not doing that today. You know? Yeah. So, but we are, we're doing readings today. So guys, get your, your thoughts together. Um, get your questions in your mind, things of that nature. Good morning, Miss Stephanie. Yep. Gordon's like, woo -hoo. love it. <laughs> so you know what? Refresh people on kind of who you are in this journey for you. Cause your journey, I think a lot of people can really resonate with, you know, cause you're very open and honest about it. I, I am. Um, it's, it's kind of been a long, a long time coming. I really actually, so for me, when I'm trying to control my energy and, and trying to kind of maintain a healthy and productive mental space, I clean. So like yesterday I purged my office and <laughs> I'm oh like, God, I'm okay, spirit, <laughs> let's throw things away. I'm fine. And I was looking through things and really realized that it was about 2018 when I really started opening up to my abilities. Um, I've always, I've always had abilities, I've grown up for a long time not even knowing i was different until and, and it's kind of my favorite story i was about 12 watching the shining which oh, wow you know, yeah and there's a part where where the characters are talking and they're talking in their head and he says you know what we have is called the shining and i'm like wait not everybody does that not everybody talks in their head not everybody sees these things right and because it wasn't talked about in my family. We didn't talk about it. So I didn't realize I, I was any different, but it, it's been hard. And you know, Dea, it's yeah. been so hard for me to, even the first holistic fair I met you at in, in uh, Ashland. Ashland. Yeah. Yep. And to even go to that, I was like, oh man, my mom finds out she's going to break my butt. Like, because there's a lot of, negative connotations associated with this. You know, yeah. people have have preconceived notions of of what this is. And really for me it's just one about learning to control my abilities to find my own peace mm -hmm. because when you let control in your abilities it's it's like a free for all right. all the time. And and I couldn't sustain that anymore. So it's, it's been, you know, the, the past couple of years taking classes with you, getting certified that I've really, and even this, this is hard. Like I'm actually, I rearranged my office and I'm sitting looking out the window because I'm waiting for like the pitchforks and torches to show up <laughs> because right. it's, it's hard. It's hard to be vulnerable. Right. And, and it's hard, not that I need to be accepted, but I don't want the negative connotations passed on to my family. Like Oh, your mom's that crazy lady that talks to dead people, you know, and, and those right. kinds of things. Right. So it's been hard, but I've been stepping into it. You know, I recently left my brick and mortar job to, to do this full time, which was really scary. And it's still really scary. Um, but I'm working on a book. I, I just became certified as a spiritual life coach. And so I'm really, really finally being me. I have the full support of my family and my husband which it's so nice. It's so nice to 
finally step back into who yeah. I'm supposed to be instead of who society wants me to be. Yeah, which is pretty cool. How has that looked for you, though, as this journey? You know what I mean? How is this? How has that struggle been for you? Because I know for you, it's been very real. You know what it I mean? Has been. I know sometimes it's even hard to talk about. But there's so many people that really have that struggle, you know, and they it's do. like how to recognize it and how to get through it. You know, I don't, I don't know for so many people, it's different. And since I've been coming out about my abilities and connecting with people, I've had more people coming in and talking to me, realizing they have abilities, realizing they're intuitive. A lot of, you know, people, I'm thankful that I didn't struggle to the point of, looking to kind of control my abilities with alcohol or drugs. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't understand because you're told you're crazy. You're hearing these voices. You're talking to dead people. This isn't possible. And so I've really started just trying to advocate, which is a big part of why I want to come out mm -hmm. because I am mostly normal. You, and you are all normal. Has nothing to do with my abilities. It's... I mean, your sarcasm would be the only thing that's not normal. <laughs> high levels of sarcasm here, oh. people. High levels. <laughs> um, but it, it's really been about going back, like especially with writing this book, going back and and looking at my journey and and things that I locked away that I chose not to remember that. I protected myself from and going back through those and, and bringing in an understanding why spirit put me through those things. Why, why did I work in law enforcement for so many years? Well, now I realize it's, it's to be able to connect to people, to be able to understand that part of society so I can help people. Mm -hmm. And so each, each things that has kind of come into my life, even though I'm not in that completely now has taken me to the parts that allow me to help people. Right. And that's, and that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> Stephanie says the sarcasm is a high, it's a very high, 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 high. I love you. <laughs> Stephanie is awesome. By the way, she's another awesome reader. So I love, she's just amazing. Um, but I agree with you. I agree with it because sometimes, sometimes that struggle is really real, you know, and I, I've told you a million times and I tell a lot of people this. So it's not just you that I like, because I know sometimes because, you know, when I was your instructor, I would like, I, I'm sure at some point felt like I was badgering you. You know what I mean? But <laughs> Never. Yeah. But, you know, I had, and it's because it was one of my biggest struggles of saying, okay, if I don't come out and I'm not who I am and I'm not authentic to who I am, mm -hmm. how can I tell my kids to be authentic? How right. can I back that? Does that make sense? It so does. And we've had that conversation. Struggle. That was my struggle of yeah. like, oh my God, you know what I mean? I wanted to hide who I was. I didn't want to explore the world. I did I wanted to save my kids. And my if I, you know, I wanted to save my grandkids. I wanted to, oh my God, what about what are my family's gonna think about me? You know what I mean? The whole 10 right. yards. And you know, and it was somebody else that actually looked at me and said, How can you tell your kids if yeah. you can't do it? And I went, Oh. Yeah, because I always tell my kids, be yourself. Don't be right. afraid. Create your job. Don't. It, it's nobody's business. It's not your business what anybody else thinks about you because it's their thoughts. Right. I preach it, but then I wouldn't live it. You right. know, just to be me. You know, yeah. and ability. And, you know, I I don't know how many people I said this weekend to people. You know what? Everybody's psychic. Everybody is. Yeah. You might use it a little bit more than I do, or vice versa. But everybody's psychic. And on some level, everybody's a medium because everybody can talk to their own loved ones. Right. And if you can talk to your own loved ones, you can strengthen that to talk to somebody else. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you know, and I look at it too, because I was, I mean, seriously, and, and all sarcasm aside, between about yesterday afternoon and through currently, <laughs> I was I'm freaking out. I mean, to yeah. me, and and people are sitting out there and it's it's like, oh, but, but it's a big deal. For me, this yeah. is a lot of vulnerability. And I was kind of going through different songs would just pop in and, and, you know, spirit had brought a song to me. It's actually called fear is a liar. And I had posted about it on my page before I came on because fear to me is, is being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I like to be a strong person. I don't like to see people to see me in my vulnerable spots. Right. And 
then it's the fear. So my fear of being vulnerable, but then people's fear that comes in and, and might judge us because they just don't understand. Right. And, you know, it's not, I'm not sacrificing chickens in the woods or, you know, I am, I'm a very spiritual person and a lot of people within this field are, it's just people pray and talk to God. Maybe I meditate and talk to God. Maybe I, I, you know, we're all communicating on some level. You go to church and you're communicating with God. That's why you're there. Right. And so it's just a different process. One step over. Exactly. And that's what it is. I mean, and I, and I think anybody, I can't say anybody, I can't put this in everybody's mouth, but I do, I have found for myself, a lot of people come with a struggle because of religion, mm -hmm. whether they're Catholic or spiritualist or Lutheran or Pentecost or what atheist, whatever, you know what I mean? And they just come to this, you know, but Hey guys, the Pope can't even stand it out and said, Hey, you guys are normal because there's too much evidence. Right. You know what I mean? So um, another, you know, Lisa talks about the neuroscience now. She's gone to learn all about neuroscience yes. because it's like, oh my God, your brains are normal. Our brains are, we are normal. You know what right. I mean? And if, if they can prove it scientifically and religiously and everything else, I think it's almost time for the rest of us to start giving up the, the process. And you right. know what? It's still always going to be a journey because it is always trusting to that unknown, trusting to surrendering, letting go. You know, but I'll tell you what, I think, I personally think you're a rock star because oh, not only are you putting your face out here now, I know how you've quit your job. You've retired. I'm I mean, retired. Kind of retired. Let's go kind of retired. Semi-retired. I am busier now. And, <laughs> and I talked to, I'm very close uh, to somebody that I, I used to work with and she's really kind of like a mentor. And it's funny because I talked to her and she's like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I just finished this class and I'm writing this book. And when I, I started selling essential oils because I'm really just trying to get people into a holistic mindset. Right. And, and she's like, oh, yeah, you were not meant for that brick and mortar, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's true. Once, like you were talking about today, you give over to the journey and you give over to that process. I feel like I finally have stepped back into me. Mm -hmm. I'm wholly here instead of just parts of me, if that yeah. makes sense. Well, it does. But if you think about your journey up until this point, like you said, you worked for the police departments, then mm -hmm. you worked for the school system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have been on a line of service for a right. long time. Right. You know, service to something and trusting something outside of yourself in that line of service to help others. Yes. You're still doing it. You're just, it's got a different title. It's different. Yep. It's, it's a different, different servitude. Title. Which is awesome. But again, it's that trust in that journey and, and, and coming full to it. I love this. Gordon has said, no worries. I have your back. Plus a lot of other biker friends. He's awesome, by the way. I love it. I he love is. my biker friends. And she, he's close. He's in Canada. So you know what I mean? He's, Perfect. He's really close if you need help. <laughs> um, Joe is like, oh my God, yes. Free for all. Stephanie is, uh, I for one appreciate your vulnerability and telling us what you do and inspiring us. You know what Thank I mean? You. And that's one reason I know we kind of toyed with this. Like, when are you going to come on when you're not going to come on? I know. And it was and so hard. <laughs> when is your birthday, by the way? I think no. I missed your birthday. No. So my birthday is the 28th. Okay. Um, we did it early. That's what it was. <laughs> 40, 40 and out. So I'm old and I'm a psychic medium. You're 40? Yeah. Really? It's okay. It's, it's a struggle for me. Oh, it's no, almost as hard turning 40. It's no. It's only... <laughs> really like for me <clears throat> telling you i'm 40 and a psychic medium like that's huge i almost rather tell you i'm a psychic than tell you i'm almost 40 honey i'm 51 so hey but you don't look 51 i'll take it thank you okay you're welcome i'll take it you know what i mean it just gets fine it's like wine you get finer you just get finer. <laughs> <laughs> amy's laughing at you so uh, she was right i was messaging her this morning too and i'm like I'm going to puke on my shoes. I mean, yeah. she is. And if you guys need inspiration, I mean, Amy's got a great book, Soul <laughs> Fed, but she's like, she's my pick me up. We really <laughs> have kind of crossed on, on our journeys. And it's like, when I'm going through stuff, she's right. in the right frame of mind. And when she's freaking out, I'm like, I got you. 
this right. is okay. So it's exactly. a partnership. Exactly. Oh my God. And you know what? Everybody's telling you how amazing you look and they're in their forties and everything else. Amy's just laughing at you. Just so you know. know. Amy, she says now she's coming back with, I love you, but oh, it was all too. about laughing at you. <laughs> no. Amy, you're already busted. You, 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 you wrote it. You can't undo it. <laughs> But I, I do love that. I love that. And I love how your journey has gotten you to this place. I really do. And just to watch how it's going to unfold and where it's going to go. And I've seen it. I mean, the rest of the world doesn't realize this. I mean, not only were you one of my, and if, if people realize like one of my first classes I taught, like the first year I was teaching, yeah. you showed up and it was literally the biggest class I taught. Yeah. I had people in there I, I honor and respect like no other you know what I mean like yeah. I was like like I can't believe I mean because the respect level I had for you know and not that I don't respect all my students but no. it's just too really I know what you mean yeah. and I was like oh my god I'm out but they were my biggest supporters since the beginning of this journey right. and then I show up to this college that doesn't put me in a classroom they put me in like in a, not the amphitheater but it might as well have been <laughs> Yes, it was not great. It wasn't the best. So it's like every, you know, and I couldn't do my projector and this couldn't happen and that couldn't happen. Oh my God. And it was just literally find a different space, crunch us in, make it work, do it off your laptop and let people see it. everything. And then I can remember you and I specific, I mean, I'd already met you at the event in Ashland, right. but here you are at my class and people don't realize this, but you know, people come in for camaraderie, you know, like they find like-minded people. And I can remember you walking in and going, okay, well, she's here. And you sitting, like, <laughs> I can't be seen with anybody. You, right. here, <laughs> But if you touch right. me or breathe on me, I might go to hell by yeah. the devil. Yeah. So and I can remember trouble. you looking at me. I'm going, why are you here, hon? You're like, I'm here for my son because my yeah. son is showing some abilities and I got to see what's going on. And I'm thinking, but you're not seeing yourself. <laughs> right. No, no. I'm just no. here for my son. <laughs> right. And nobody breathe on me because I can't be contagious. <laughs> <laughs> right. You were terrified. I was. You I was were terrified. terrified. I, I mean, mean, I know the scale of one to ten with client with students I've had, you were the most afraid right. of this and this yep. part of you. You know, but I can remember by the end of that day. I mean, through little breaks and lunch. And by the end of the day, you had friends, you had camaraderie, you had started to connect and you went, gosh, I'm really not alone in this. And right. maybe it's okay. Yeah. Maybe and that this was is the just okay. thing. Yes. yes. I seen the transformation in one day to go, wow. And I'm like, God, this woman's going to be a rock star. She's going to blow me away. I mean, oh my God, what is she going to wow. do? And now you become one of my dearest friends Yes. through the yeah. process of this. Right. You know what I mean? So and everybody wants to know when I'm like, oh my God, I can't figure this out. I get a hold of Charlie. I'm like, oh my God, help. You know? I got you. I got it's, you. It does. It's awesome. And yeah. I love that. And I just, I truly feel like you can inspire a lot of people with your journey. And that's and my hope. At this point. And that's, that really is my hope. And my hope, you know, not only to advocate people to understand accepting their abilities really will improve their mental health. It really will improve their viewpoint within life, but also to be an advocate for children. You know, I, I was that kid that was going through all these things and grew up in that generation where it wasn't talked about. And so I grew up in fear and really I didn't have to, you know, and now, you know, coming out to some of my family and, and talking to them and having these conversations and they all have abilities. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why didn't you guys tell me? I felt so alone. And, and I don't want anybody else to feel alone. I want them to know because I didn't know where to go for resources. Right. And I'm like, oh, holistic fair. Okay, let's check this out. And I just want people to know there's resources out there. There's a community out there that we're here to help. And, mm -hmm. and we're really here to help you understand why you are at where you're at in your journey and, and what's going on throughout your journey. Yeah. And that's one thing you've been doing up in your community. Yeah. Now, I mean, people don't realize this, but you know, Charlie lives up in Northern Wisconsin mm -hmm. and I'm talking, you have the sticks and then you have where Charlie lives. <laughs> you know it's, what true. I mean? it's true. It's true. It's not that you don't have a lot of communities, but they're all smaller, you know, yes. and they're like a lot of, a lot of trees in between each community. You know yes. what I mean? Um, but you're doing what you can to bring people to say, hey, we're here. I'm here. Let me help you. 
right. come out of the woods, come out from behind the tree. You know what I mean? You're not alone in this journey. No, that's, that's been super. You need one of these shirts, just. I do. I like that shirt because yeah. I'm all about loyalty and I'm all about that within a circle and supporting each other. Um, but and no, I, yeah, I, I ordered this shirt blindly, just so you know. Oh. This and one other one, it says ble um, "gratefully blessed but truly a mess." <laughs> I like that one. That's the one I need. <laughs> that's the one I need. I ordered them blind. I totally, totally blindfold, like grab bag, size medium. Yeah. And they nice. it your, they bring it right to your drawer and hand it to you. It was awesome. Can't beat that. You don't even pick it up. So I'm like, oh my god, somebody <laughs> knew me. Somebody knew me. But going on with what you're doing, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm no, so I, I haven't had enough sleep. <laughs> I know. I was surprised to see that you were home actually, but I'm glad because I was like really afraid that you'd be like driving along and then we'd like witness like horrible ending to your feet while you weren't paying attention to driving. But that would be trust in my surrender to my, my <sighs> thing of going through Chicago. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I think I'd have stroked out watching you drive through Chicago from this end. And in the construction down there as well. Yes. No. I would have probably did the whole show stand still and, 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 and anything. <laughs> I've thought about it coming through last night. I'm like, this would have been fine because you know what? It had been rush hour. It had been standstill traffic because they got, they've got everything like shut down to one lane. Right. I'd have done the show just sitting there anyway. It'd been safe. Well, see, six hours in traffic, it would have been fine. Perfect. But so we digress. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I know. This is the problem, people. Yes. This is, we can't get anything accomplished. Oh, yes. I know. So I have this great idea of, of trying to bring in a holistic hub yep. to the community. And I've been looking at how do I bring that into a brick and mortar? How, how do I pull these things together? Because, you know, we have great, you know, like the mind, body, spirit fair and these great fairs, but these littler towns like where I live are missed. And so unless I'm going to travel an hour to an hour and a half, I'm not going to get any of these experiences. And I, I look at especially the Northwoods, especially smaller communities. How do you foster healing? How do you bring in this education? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of going back and forth with spirit and, and spirit says, so your only issue is you don't have a place, right? And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I need a building. And and I, I'm stubborn. I mean, anybody in my family will tell you that. And Spirit says, why don't you rent a location? And so that's what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. In June, we are having a holistic metaphysical fair in my very small town. Um, Dayette's going to be there. We have a mm -hmm. lot of other fantastic. I mean, I am so excited about. You, like centers. you opened it up and so many people that travel all over Wisconsin and yeah. further out are showing up. It's like, oh my God. I am. I am so excited and I'm excited. You know, there's going to be fellow classmates there who certified mm -hmm. with you. And, right. and so just to have, first of all, that support, you know, of my friends, of having you and Anne and Ellie and, and these other people coming in to provide products and to provide services. But then, you know, when I, I posted the event, I was like, I'm not going to get a great response. You know, it's the middle of nowhere. And then to have, you know, Jessa Robinson from the Mind um, Body she's, Spirit Fair yeah. reach out. I mean, and she's amazing. And she was one of the first ones that said, where? Yeah. And so the support, you know, it's not, yeah, nobody is in competition with each yeah. other. And we Jessa know. already does the Northwoods with her fair. She does right. the smaller communities. I mean, she's she fantastic. doesn't go that far up. Right. And yeah. it's, you know, so, and what I think people need to understand is I'm not here to compete with Dayette for clients. Yeah. I'm here with the belief that the right clients are going to go and find the right people mm -hmm. and the right, they'll find the right help that they need for their situation. Lisa wants to know what Tom. Yeah, it's going to be in Butternut, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So go all the way up. We're about an hour south from Ashland. And if you go on my Facebook page, Chat with Charlie, it's the event is posted on there. It's listed out who our vendors are. Um, and I'm really excited. I'm really excited to add Barnaby Jones. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Barnaby, is. I just met Barnaby and I'm like, he is a riot. He is so awesome. And he's, and for people that he's don't know, caps of anybody who wants to know. Yes. He, and, and which is, that is kind of my other love. I, I am a geek for the paranormal. I'm a geek for cryptoids and anomalies and being in the Northwoods. There's a lot of stories of those things going on. And so I am just, I'm kind of geeking out about that in all honesty. I, I told my husband. We have to do another paranormal investigation somewhere. We do. We awesome. really do. We do. We I really do. think we need to just. 
you know, rent that haunted venue and we need to do that. I angle. think we're going to do that. Yeah, guys, we are we are slowly but surely talking about renting a haunted venue and doing a paranormal class, teaching people how to do paranormal. Yeah. So we're okay. thinking about it. It's not on the docket yet, but we got a lot of talking to do and going that way. So, you know, there's a lot of things possibly in the works, but we're not going to mention them all yet. We got to get everything talked out and put Lined out. up and we'll let you know at that point. <laughs> um, Cause I don't want to go, Oh my God, we're going to do all this. And then we're like, eh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there you go. But I do want to go back. You know what? When you talk about the gathering place and it's as mm -hmm. people, um, Oh, I love that. Lisa Bernard says, uh, it's a drive, but I definitely have a soft spot for small towns and how they get missed. Sounds like a great reason for a road trip and a day with the people I love and, that and like my awesome. people. Yeah. Definitely, Lisa. Like, oh my God, you would, I mean, seriously, some amazing people are showing up to it. Mm -hmm. um, um, there is a hotel in Chicago you could do. Can't remember the name, but it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot. I actually kind of want to make her go all the way down to San Antonio, Texas, Joe. <laughs> Right. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I've stayed at the Mirage. Is it the Mirage? No, I can't think of the name of it. The Great. The Gr now I'm going to have to Google. That's uh, funny because, you know, Spirit keeps telling me. So up there with my fears is I, I really, really dislike flying. And Spirit's like, yep, we're going to work on that next. I'm like, oh, that's why I want to take you to Mexico and every place mm -hmm. else, huh? Is that what it is? That's what it is. I'm yeah. telling you, I just want to take you every place. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep hearing, like, I got to take you here. I need to take you there. I'm literally Googling the name of this hotel. Um, I know where it's at because I stayed there. Uh... It's right next door to the Alamo. Like literally, I looked out oh. and there it was, the Menger. That Menger. would be exciting. It was so awesome because the first night we're there, um, you know, because literally I opened up my my window, my curtains, and there's there is the Alamo right there. Ooh. <laughs> and but the how it's literally the most haunted hotel, I guess, in Texas. Um, and when he first walked in, it's like, yeah, hey, yeah, it feels old, blah, blah, blah. Nothing happens, kind of like the first the investigation we went on. You could talk right. to people, but nobody's gonna mm -hmm. show up, right? So you lay down to go to sleep and all of a sudden the rocking chair starts rocking and you're like, old lady, you're not doing that all night long. Cause I need <laughs> right. I literally was like, I'm like, old lady, knock it off. I need sleep. <laughs> like I already know you're there. You can talk to me in different ways. Let's go. Deb is like haunted hotel. She's in. See? There you go. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, there you go. people we'll will come. You guys. We'll definitely do this. Yeah. Um, Cause then we can do the investigation as we teach and everything. It'd be super awesome. But it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun doing what we do and going where we're going and watching things explore and open up, yeah. you know? So I love that. I love that. So anybody got questions yet? Because did I tell you we're doing readings today? Oh, I thought you were going to forget about that. <laughs> yeah, you almost sound Canadian. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really funny. And I've noticed because I'm, I'm not from Wisconsin, although in about I know. two years I'll live here as long as I lived on the East Coast. But I, I am from the East Coast. And when I used to get really upset and I lived here, I would get, I would pick up my Pennsylvania Dutch accent again, and mm -hmm. that would really come through. But now that I'm here, when I start to get nervous, it comes out as like this weird Wisconsin, Pennsylvania mesh. It's like Wisconsin, German, Spanglish. I love that. It's kind of like when I get, Stephanie's like, I'm Canadian. I know Stephanie. I love it. <laughs> um. Oh boy. Everybody's questions are coming in. I love that. Um, but before we take the first question, I get that because although I've lived in Wisconsin my whole life, my whole life, um, my sister lived in Texas, mm -hmm. you know, for 35 years of her 45 or yeah, about, about 30 to 35 years of her 45 years, but like 30 years, I think it was. Okay, got it. Yeah. Cause she was 15 when she moved. I got to think of all these numbers, you know, but we would talk notoriously at nighttime. You know, when the kids went to bed and we right. would, we would get on the phone anywhere from nine to 10 o'clock at night and talk until two, three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. until she got this job where she had to be up at like dark 30 in the morning, which was like one <laughs> thirty in the morning. So things really changed at that point. But, she, you know, she would say, I don't have a Southern accent. God bless her heart. And then right. she would start to really get tired. 
And then that Southern draw would really happen. Sure. So it's really funny. So for myself, like I pick up accents really well. Like if I go to Texas, if I'm there for more than two days, I'm a full Southern. I'm coming. <laughs> right. To right. And I don't mean to, but it just shows up. You know, I go to Ireland. I'm doing the same thing. Scottish, it, they didn't rub off on me like that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It is what it is. Um, and it's so funny because now when I get tired and it, when I was living in Hayward and working at Famous Dave's, you would not believe how many people when I get tired go, are you from the South? And I'd be like, Southern Wisconsin. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they're like, well, Jesus. you have a very strong Southern accent. And I'm like, y'all, okay. <laughs> you know I mean? But it would come out every time I get tired, I get to start to get this Southern drawl to it. Right. So I completely understand that one. So but it makes us interesting. It really does. Fun. It gives it gives us character. It does. Yes. It does. It, Go ahead. To answer so, Deborah's question, um, I uh, do. Can you put Deborah's up there, please, for me, darling? Thank you. Starting a new job tomorrow. Thoughts? No. Why? Well, that wasn't the question I was going to answer. Oh. She <laughs> she asked about past life work. If I've done any past life work. Oh. And I, which is okay. Keep that question there. We'll jump. To, we'll jump to that one in a second. We'll jump to the other one in a second. But the past yeah. life work. Let's do it. But I, I have done some, um, I haven't sat down and, and had any past life regression done. I know you have to yet, but yep. I am. I was actually my past life therapist. Yeah. <laughs> you're like that, Deb. You're my past life therapist. There you go. So <laughs> I guess that's about my extent you too. You know to be. <laughs> that's funny. So no, I, I have not done any past work life on myself, um, but I have done it for other people. So, okay. I love it. I love now it. Now go to her question. Now her little question is starting a new job tomorrow. Any thoughts on that? I almost feel like she's kind of had some, I don't want to say second thoughts about it, but almost not quite sure which way to go when looking into stepping into this job. And, and so I, I almost feel a little hesitation of, is this the right fit? Is this what I need to step into? And I feel like, I feel like, the first maybe month or so, it's still kind of going to be like feeling things out, feeling because I feel like this is a little bit different than than what you've done. But I feel like as as you move through that and you realize that you are capable and that it is not outside of things that you you've done, I do feel like it's going to become a better fit for you. But I feel like you're still going to kind of be apprehensive the first month or so within starting the position. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. I, it's weird because I feel I feel that apprehensive as as everybody knows I'm feeling in my physical and I just feel it down in down deep in my lungs and up you know down and I and down because I do know you personally I already know that you know your direction your your goals and going on that aspect but I feel like you're still um, I feel like this is just gonna be one job to the next job for right now um, until everything can really kind of full, come full circle and kind of like you're adding more things to your repertoire to your library. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't feel like the next one is like a forever job, but I think it's one more stepping stone on to where you're going to be. Um, and I feel like you have to look at it from that aspect, but I don't think you're looking at it bad. I just think it's kind of like, is this what I should be doing? Should I be going? You know what I mean? That type of thing. Um, I feel like you're going to backtrack, uh, not in an aspect of backtracking, like within, um, your you know, nine to five job backtracking there. But I feel like in some aspects you're looking at it, like I'm backtracking. I'm like not going forward with what my pursuit is, but backtrack within it. But I want to let, I want to let you know that you're not, you really are going forward. You're just adding more to you. Um, and, and, and going further with that. Okay. So just kind of keep taking those nuggets and those pieces and add it to who you are and exactly what's going to be your forever thing. I also feel like you're going to be adding another modality beyond the hypnosis therapy or might be doing more within hypnosis. And speaking of which, I got a book for you, Deb. So when I come, don't let me forget to bring it to you. So um, that's about it that I'm getting. Yeah, I got scheduled her again. So I, I hear great her. things. I, I really, if I ever get that way. I'm, yeah. Well, she does it by Zoom, just so you know. No, but my house is a little crazy. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I, when will I be able to quit my job and do this full time? Joe is asking. So it's kind of funny. And with things like this, I, 
spirit is holding up a mirror, which to me then is, is a really a reflection of myself. And so I feel like for Joe, you're going to be able to quit your job and do this full time when you fully commit. I feel like just like me, you're holding part of yourself back. And so while you're like, oh, I'm stuck, I want to do this, I'm not happy, you haven't fully committed to that process of switching over and, and opening up that vulnerability and, and just like me sitting here right now. So I feel like when you, and it's not even that you don't believe in yourself, but you still question yourself, you still question your abilities. And I feel like you need to step completely into them and really start trusting. You need to build that trust. And, and so once you do that, I feel like you'll be able to progress. Mm -hmm. You know, 110%, because actually Joe is one of my students, current students, and she did a read for me last night because she's an intermediate and the reading was phenomenal. And I got a lot of the same stuff when she was doing it. It's not that I can't do this or I don't believe in myself of doing this. It really was a feeling of like, do I have enough to do this? Do mm -hmm. I have enough? And I will tell you what, Joe, as because she, she just literally signed up for advance too. And it's kind of like, I'm really feeling it's like by the time you get through all these classes and, and everything that you're doing for yourself, you're going to start to see yourself really evolve and become this whole like, oh, not just can I do this and this is cool and this is amazing. But, oh, my gosh, this is more than a parlor trick. Like, oh, my God, I'm really changing people's lives. Oh, my God, I'm really, you know what I mean? Oh, my God, oh, my God, you know? And those revelations are going to start hitting. If you think you're getting them hit now, you're going to be blown away But what you're going to get, you know, six months down the road, you know, or a year down the road. And you're going to watch that journey just kind of, you're going to watch the other one just kind of fall away. And it's almost like I'm seeing, like, and I'm not even quite sure what you do, Joe. I really, I know I've seen you with like a vest, but I'm, I don't really know what you do. But I feel like you're going to end up in a layoff situation and just go, I don't need to go back type of thing. So I don't think it's going to be a conscious quit. I think it's going to be a layoff, maybe a winter layoff or something like that. And just going right back in, you know, not going back into the job. But again, it's going to be with more added to and more trust. But, you know, Stephanie, I'll tell you, as you're going through this, you hit advance with me and all the time. <laughs> it's rough. It's, it's rough. rough. It's I mean, rough. yeah, that's it's all I can say. It's it, it is very transforming, but it opens up parts of yourself that you have to, you can't just look at. And that was the thing about advanced. Some of the other stuff, and I'm a horrible student, like I could skim over some of the stuff in the other classes and just... Mm -hmm. Leave that stuff kind of boxed up and be like, oh yes, Dia, I dealt with it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. when you when you start getting into into advanced, you can't just leave those things unpacked. And you might not unravel them all during the class, but it is going to be like a continuous unraveling until you acknowledge and work to heal those parts. Mm -hmm. And, and it, maybe it was you, Daya, too, that had said, how do you expect to step in and help somebody else when you refuse to look and heal yourself? You know, you don't want to be that person falling apart because somebody's coming in with their trauma that they need help with and you never dealt with yours. Mm hmm. Exactly. And that's exactly it. Hundred and ten percent. OK, who is on the next question? Jody, spirit plans for me after Jane's off next six months this is totally not a good analogy that i saw but I, <laughs> really, oh spit man. it out woman spit it out so what spirit showed me seriously is somebody up on stage with a stripper pole and like the money like just this is what i see and Jody, you need a pole. letting it rain like all this money and this this fruitfulness and <laughs> I don't know what what was with the with the analogy that they gave me, but I really take it as as coming out of a comfort zone. You know, being on the stage, being vulnerable in in what happens within that stage, and it being fruitful. So I feel like you're going to be going through some lessons in working in your vulnerability, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, and knowing that you can still be vulnerable and you can still be strong and you can still work through those things. And so I feel like it's going to almost be like leveling up, which, and I huff when I say that because when spirit levels you up, it's not fun, but I feel like, I really feel like that's kind of what's going to be going on for her. I think it's going to be leveling up, um, looking at 
different clients, you know, and, and this was something that I really worked with in my spiritual life coaching was learning what kind of clients you want to work with, manifesting that type of clientele to you. And, and that comes through vulnerability and healing because you know what kind of person is matched with your experiences and how you can help them. And so I feel like this is kind of opening the door for Jody. And I feel like once she steps through, mm. it, it's going to be a couple months of that leveling up and, and that high paced energy. But then I feel like it is going to be fruitful. Right. It's so fun. I love how you've seen a stripper pole because I, I don't know if you're old enough or anybody is here. Do you remember the gong show? It's yes. It's in the 1970s. Yes. I heard a big gong and then I started <laughs> to see the gong show. I'm like, <laughs> right. It's, it's, but you know what? I think it's, I love it because it is that representation of, and if anybody remembers the gong show, if not Google it, because it was awesome. I mean, it was the stupidest show you ever see. It really was. <laughs> but it was everybody taking all their oddities of what they did. You know what I mean? These whatever things they did. And and literally somebody put them on the stage to say, be yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just be who you are. Celebrate you. Let's do this. And you either got voted in or you got gonged off. But if you got gonged off, there was a big celebration. You know what I mean? Because you still were celebrating yourself. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it is for you, Jody. It's finally going, okay, so I'm, you know, so I'm a little different. So I'm this, so I'm that. Oh, well. You know what I mean? But starting to really celebrate you on every level. So there you go. I, I think the stripper pole was probably a nicer analogy. Well, you know what? Oh, he's going to like, she's going to so send me the gong show. I already know it. Sometimes when spirit brings these things in, like you, it's so hard to even bring up the analogy sometimes of what they're showing you because... Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. You do. Just kind of right? look and go, why am I seeing this? Well, the gong show was stupid, but I'll tell you what, it was so <laughs> celebrating your oddities. Yeah. Celebrating absolutely. those, you know what? You can play the flute through your nose. That would be on there, you know? <laughs> Pamela, I keep dreaming about my daughter as a little girl. She said she's moving to Milwaukee. Is this really where she's going to end up? I feel like for now, I, I do feel like an. I'm not really sure that it'll be right within, you know, inner city Milwaukee, but I feel like what spirit's showing me is, is you dreaming of her as a little girl is helping you to let go because she is getting older. She has to start going on her own path. And so I think it's, it's spirit trying to start bringing that into you of she's not a little girl anymore and that she is going to have her own challenges. She's going to have her own path that she's going to follow. And so I think it's really not so much about where she's going to end up, but getting you ready to know that she's ready to start traveling some roads, not on her own, because as a parent, you're always with your child, you support your child, but she's really ready to step out and, and say, okay, I'm, I'm going this way, mom, and start making some of her own decisions, coming into her own power, which as a parent means, again, that vulnerability of, of letting go, trusting that you taught your child well enough to go out into the world and do the things that they need to do. And, and so I, I really feel that's why Spirit's bringing that in. I don't really foresee her being, like I said, right in town in Milwaukee, but definitely in a, in a busier area, but maybe kind of more on the outskirts. Um. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 110% because I do feel, and I keep seeing her walking downtown Milwaukee. I keep, see, I keep seeing downtown Milwaukee, um, which downtown is actually very beautiful. You know what I mean? It's a lot. I mean, once you really get downtown, it's awesome. Um, but I see her navigate. I'm seeing there's a lot of fears there when she first navigates, but I feel like this is, again, part of her journey. It's, you know, um, becoming, knowing you're, you're more than you think you were. Mm -hmm. You know, really, because I can feel her throat chakra just all like stuck, you know what I mean? But as she's going down this journey, it starts to open up and starts to flourish. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I feel like I need music or something. I don't know you know, I'd be kind of like that all morning, like, just, you know. Yeah. Know. You know, well, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I've only had four hours of sleep, so... <laughs> Maybe I should go back to coffee. 
John Lucas Jones, trying to leave my current company and looking into going into a different field of work, but scared of leaving my current career. Oh, First, I'm going to say hi to Don. I love that. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Don is, I'm going to defer this one to you. I know Don personally. No, no. Okay. She's a very mm -hmm. beautiful friend who I accidentally kind of came out to not that long ago. And she's really just supported me. And I just, I really love her <laughs> for that. But I, I just want to leave this one to you. I love it. I love that. It's like accidentally came out. Mm -hmm. Accidentally came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. You know what? All of a sudden, the dead person shows up. You got a grandma with you. <laughs> Oops. Um, so trying to leave my current company, looking into into a different field, but of work. You know what, Don? This is what I'm feeling. As, as you know, is I get a lot of feelings with things, and then they come with visions or hearing or whatever. And I feel like you're getting picked up by the scruff of your neck. You know what I mean? Like a little kid, like your mom's upset with your mom's happening. She's going to pick you up by the scruff and kind of pull you around. You know what I mean? It doesn't hurt, but it's kind of a not force. It's forceful. You know what I mean? But it's a gentle force. Like you need to do this. And I feel like this, this switch for you is almost like divine timing, divine happening. And you need to allow this to happen. Cause I feel like you're struggling. That struggle is real for you. And I, but I feel like you're realizing that all, you know what I mean? you're getting pushed out one way or another. You know what I mean? You're just getting pushed out, whether it be, you know, what downsizing or, you know, getting fired or, oh my God, it just hurts to go to the company or it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? It's this forceful, um, gentle forcefulness of getting kind of pushed out of it. So I do feel like you'll be leaving your current company. I think you're going to try to, before you do that, I think you're going to try to skip jobs within the current company because I feel like you're looking at like, I don't want to leave the security. So what else can I do? You're playing a Stephanie. What else can I do within <laughs> this company to stay current, but yet still leave it? And it's nothing against anybody. You know what I mean? It's the process. It's just a process. But I feel like you're going to do that. I feel like, though, at that point, though, that I instead of you flipping, I feel like it's more like becomes a hassle. Like it becomes a hassle to do that. And I'm... I'm seeing you throw your hands. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, just screw it. I'm just going to go do this anyway. You know what I mean? But I feel like you're going to go through a struggle for a time period before you do that. But I think it's more of a stubbornness, you know, because like, you know, mom grabs you by the scruff of your neck. You're on your tiptoes trying not to go where she wants you to go. You know what I mean? So, and that's what it feels like. So uh, my advice to you would be just to, you know, walk away now and, and flip, flip to something else, flip to where you want to go and see what happens. Just kind of you know, shoot, shoot it towards the wind and see what, where it goes. Jobs out there are plentiful right now because still nobody's working. So it's, you know, even McDonald's is probably spending 16, 17 dollars an hour. So you're not going to starve, you know what I mean? And you'll add more things to your repertoire, but I do think it's going to happen. So hopefully that makes sense, Miss Dawn. Next. God, everything's so quiet. I need music. I know. You need it's background because it's a party when we're together. I'm telling you, I'm like, do, 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 do. <laughs> and I feel so quiet. Stephanie, am I on the right path with what I'm focused on for my psychic mediumship business? And will I be able to make a living doing this and not having a paycheck to paycheck job? Oh, I'm glad you're back, Gordon. You missed a bunch of readings, Gordon. So I, I kind of hear is yes but not right now. And so I feel like spirits kind of coming in and, and I almost feel like with Stephanie and, and it kind of see me like running, 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 like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And spirits like, whoa, whoa, wait, you, you are going to do this, but you have to do this, 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 and this. And then I go, ah, really? Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to go from here to there. And so I feel like there's, there's a couple of of things within your life that like they're showing me kind of getting things in line. And so like for me, that meant, you know, looking at my husband and I's our financial situation and, and adjusting and looking at things before I made the jump to leaving my regular job. So setting things up so that you don't have that immediate pressure the day after you leave your brick and mortar where you're like, all right, I need five readings today or else I'm screwed. And so I feel like start now manifesting, looking at your plan, looking and envisioning where you want to see yourself. Give yourself a timeline of this doesn't have, have to happen today. 
maybe, and I'm feeling like, I feel like eight months. I feel like within eight months, you're really going to start seeing change. Not that you're going to be leaving, but that it's going to be starting to progress quicker and not where you just kind of feel like everything's dragging their feet right now. I feel like you'll start seeing things coming together. But spirit really right now is like, okay, this, 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 and this. You, you've got a checklist of things that you need to do and you need to set up to ensure like I said, that when you do leave, you have some cushion, you have some time to come out and show your face, to to build your brand, to build your reputation. You know, start start hustling the weekend fairs and, and getting yourself out there and, and just really start making those things a priority and, and kind of going through the checklist. So in, the, in that eight months when spirit goes, all right, let's go high gear. You can then step in and say, okay, I'm ready. I can do this now. And, you know, and, and for everybody that looks, that looks different. Mm -hmm. And it does. And it's, it's weird because while you're talking, I want to just add in there because I keep seeing aha moments, aha, aha, mm -hmm. aha. And Stephanie, I don't know if your abilities are changing or kind of morphing a little bit, because I just feel as if, um, I feel like you're feeling more things and it's almost like the medical intuitive or that. And you're going, Oh my God, what is this? And I just feel like it's another modality coming in or your abilities are just kind of growing. And that trust factor is happening. And again, more aha moments. I feel yeah. like that's happening for you. I also feel like as you're going through this, it's having more, um, more feelings within yourself that I can do this more trust within yourself as you're, as you're building this, you know, getting in preparation to walk away. Um, she says she's been laid off for two years, have applied for other regular jobs, but not getting hired, no money coming in. So already in that boat. There you go. Um, yes, yeah, Stephanie, it's again, just you need to trust. You, mm -hmm. It's really just trusting and knowing and realizing you don't have to have somebody like myself or or anybody else to say, oh, my God, you're amazing. To realize that you're amazing by the fact that people have said how great you are. I really you know, feel like she has those abilities to keep growing. Like she's on a ledge. Like I keep seeing her like on that ledge and looking and it's like, okay, just jump, yeah. jump. You're already there. So jump, you know? So yeah, take the paycheck. Yeah. Well, the paycheck from spirit anyway. Okay. Hopefully that helped Miss Stephanie. Who would like to be next? Jessica, how will my job situation work with having a baby soon? Well, your psychicness is going away because, you know, only psychic when you're pregnant. I'm kidding. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> poor Jess. <laughs> Jess is like, yes, I get to be comfortable and get a break. Right? She's like, oh, mental quietness. Right. I do feel like while Jess has been pregnant, you know, that it almost kind of adds to the energy of your abilities. Mm -hmm. and And I do feel like... Once she has the baby, she will kind of get some of that rest to focus on, okay, baby, and, and some of that mental quietness. But I, I don't feel like it's going to stay that way for long because I feel like within a couple months, Jess has to jump back in. I just feel like that energy of, okay, I have to jump back in. I need to, you know, focus on this. And because I almost feel like a part of her feels empty when she's not using her abilities. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that you're going to work it out. You'll, you'll be able to work around baby and figure it out. You'll just have that little bit of adapting time and a little bit of a downtime, but enjoy the downtime. I keep seeing her trying to schedule readings around baby naps. Yeah. You know, baby naps. And, and it's pretty awesome because babies and when they're first born, usually nap for what, two, three hours per time. Right. That's three times a day because they're not sleeping at night. Obviously, but I'm seeing you do it with that, like in between those times. Um, I don't know if I'm seeing you doing as many events as you've always done, but I think that's giving you the ability to grow your at-home business, you know, and, and kind of letting that go into that direction. I'm also feeling, don't take this wrong, Jess, because you're already very mature within this. But, you know, when I say mature within this, it's like maturing your business, taking it to another level growing it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like it's, that's, what's going to start to happen is that growth, that maturity within the business, the business itself, you know, and you going, wow, this is cool. There's other, you know what I mean? Other ways to do this and build it. So yeah. And your Facebook lives will be amazing. So hopefully that helps. I'm telling you we need music. 
<laughs> oh my god you don't realize normally it's like the grandkids and stuff are always on the other side of the door but i can hear them right but i'm the only one in the house <laughs> and it's like i'm alone in a haunted it's house quiet. It's it's just quiet. Too even the spirits are sleeping you know what i mean so it's like oh <laughs> thank you oh there is that todd Oh my god. Must be. It's not oh, me. You, Todd. I've been like going crazy over here. Like, <laughs> like dead people are talking. Um, who's that? Oh, that sounds beautiful. It is. Just, it just is. Little... I needed that. Um, who is up next? We are looking. We are looking. Is it Terry T? I think so. It says, What do I need to look out for next week? For the next week. I almost feel some frustrations coming in. Um, and I don't know if this is related around work, but I almost feel like it is related around an interpersonal relationship. So, but I am feeling kind of like, kind of like this is a work frustration or it's, it's outside of the home. So I feel like there's some frustrations that'll be coming in and I almost feel like it's, because you don't feel in tune. Like the energy doesn't feel in tuned. It doesn't feel like it's flowing. I feel like you're not on the same page. And so to me, I would say to watch for, you know, possible conflict coming in and be ready to stand up for your expectations, but also be willing to compromise within that space. Because I almost feel like this is going to be a no win situation where you're going to have to find a way to work with the person to kind of get past that frustration. I, I agree with full heartedly, but I feel like it's going to be so much because I'm getting whirlwind in my head. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like whirlwind, whirlwind. And then all of a sudden, my I, I call my medium Shabir versus my psychic gear. You know what I mean? Like how I do it, you know? Um, and all of a sudden, my psychic gear is just popping open. Like in order to calm this down, you have to listen to the things that are unseen coming in and get that information to help calm this going down because it feels like that is going to help go on further with this. Okay help you kind of navigate through some challenges this week. So I am here. Everything will be just fine. Yeah. It's how I'm hearing it though. Everything's just going to be just fine. Like, <laughs> like your mom or your grandma going to you like, it's all okay. You know? So it's kind of like when you walk into the haunted house and Stephanie looks and it's okay. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. We just have to be gone by 1030 before they wake up. Before, <laughs> the, before the really mean one comes upstairs. <laughs> so hopefully that helped, my dear. Um, Deborah or Deborah, Deidre. I keep getting hit with financial restrictions, but I feel they're meant to. They're meant to make me step forward and use abilities to more public way. Any thoughts? I do feel like spirits coming in and, and kind of slowing things down for a reason, but I feel more like the question is, is the spending and, and is the things that your financial energy, so the creation of the finances and, and where those finances go, is that in alignment with where you want to be so I, I feel like they're coming in because i feel like where you want to be and what you're manifesting for yourself is not in alignment with the way you're creating the money with the with where that money is being spent and allocated so i feel like there's not a an even flow or a good flow in the finances with where you need to be aligned to so i would say you, you really kind of need to sit down with yourself and your higher self and spirit and look at that alignment and how do you get your finances back within that alignment to then secure more finances, excuse me, and to open up more doors that you want to use those finances for. Um, and I also keep hearing, ask people if they take pay payment plans for some reason. I don't know why. Um, like, will you take a payment plan? Will you, you know what I mean? Whatever that be, because I feel like I honestly feel like it's not so much of financial restrictions of other things. It's those financial restrictions that you're putting on yourself. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, I want to do this or I want to do that. But now I can't do that because I've, I've created this restriction, you know? So it's like, once you do that, give yourself a back door to say, you know what? I'm still not going to allow that to happen. Allow myself to block myself and find a different way around it until you finally release that way of thought. 
you know, I'm, I'm talking to you and then I got my second monitor going and it's delayed. So it's like, I'm doing this with my finger, you know what I mean? And then I look over and on my thing's going, dur, 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 dur. <laughs> it's a light reaction, it's not good. So Deidre, I hope that helped a little bit or made sense to you. Oh, I wanted to let you know, Terry T said, it's good to hear that everything's going to be just fine. Thanks ladies, much blessings. So, thank you. Beautiful. Miss Elise, how do you shut off the emotion or feelings when you connect with spirit of a person who has passed on? Many times it, it overwhelms me, like their expressions of love and sadness. That's a great question. I I really struggled with that um, coming into my abilities. And because I don't often, you know, I'm not a medical intuitive, so I don't always feel it in my body. But there's been a couple of times where... I've connected to a spirit who met very unfortunate ends of their life that that wasn't of their own doing and and feeling that feeling how they passed going going through the feelings of their body transitioning or that that sadness and what I learned and what works for me is I, I take the pain as it comes and I, I let my body experience it and then I let it go. But I almost try to to detach in, in my third eye or, or wherever I'm feeling it so that it's more like a movie. So I'm viewing it more as a movie. I'm seeing the emotion just like you would on a movie. You see somebody crying, you feel that emotion, but I let it come and I let it pass. Mm -hmm. That's That's been my technique that's really helped me, but it takes a while to to learn that and, and to be able to process through that. It's not something that you're gonna instantly be able to do. Right. And see for myself, it's two, I have like a twofold for that one because one is because I am the medical intuitive and you know, and all of that. So when it comes to that, the feeling thing, it's like, as soon as I say it, I release it. Like if it's yours, take it back, it's not mine. And that's for that feeling thing, at least that feeling. When it comes to the emotion things, I am a big advocate of checking your ego at the door checking your ego at the door knowing that when you're doing readings know that when you're working with spirit or you're working with energy it again is none of our business what is going on behind the scenes we're only there as a voice for the unseen that's what we're there for i'm also an advocate to say hey wait a second there's always a bigger picture that i don't know about you know there's always a bigger picture that the universe knows i don't know and who am I to put judgment on that? So it's very, it, it almost makes me probably look as if I'm this heart, excuse my language, heartless bitch, but I'm not, you know what I mean? Because if I put my ego into it, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I get all, you know, I get emotional, I get this and that, but I've got to pull myself out of it and say, you know what? Um, this has happened for a reason. This has happened in your life. This person has done this or that has happened. And to really separate myself from it and realize that, you know what? all of it's for a reason and it's helped me with my life to look back as i've healed there's not a person in my life that hasn't quote unquote wronged me in some way um that i wouldn't go and give the biggest hug and maybe a kiss on the cheek and say oh my god thank you and they would probably look at me like i beat your ass or, yeah thank you because i experienced something i needed to and it's made me who i am today and i help so many other people now get through that, have closure, have forgiveness, have healing, because I understand how that works. So again, sometimes things, there's just a bigger reason for it, which is amazing. So um, Gordon is saying, good idea, never own the energy. Yup, knows where it comes from and belongs. I love that. And here, here is something right shoulder, had x-ray and ultrasound, nothing found but painful for over a few months. Thoughts, so, oh, sorry, that's a question. Sorry, go for it. We'll go to the next question. <laughs> According, I'm just looking at everything you said. I love it. Brenda, good morning. Having an amazing day. Anything I know should know today? I hear be love. And and I feel like, I feel like Brenda is a a loving person but i feel like it's be loved to yourself because I, i'm i'm feeling like i feel like you undersell yourself brenda i feel like you don't take the time to self like self-value or to like treat yourself or do things for yourself i feel like everybody else comes first 
and you say very little energy to invest back in yourself and and i get that i mean i've been there and i think we go through that all of us do but i really think it's time that spirit is coming in and they're redirecting you back to love yourself you have value you are more than just skin you know you you're a soul you you have value to offer people you are worthy of being loved the way that you want to be loved and you're worthy of accepting that love and so I, I really feel that the message for you is just allowing that to come in. I, you know, sometimes like when people give us a compliment and we'll kind of, we'll brush it off and we won't accept it. No, be accepting of the love. You have so much value and you're a really, just, a, I feel like you're a really genuine person. And so be willing to accept that into your life. I'm also hearing, Brenda, you need to make a plan. Make a plan. Know what you want, make a plan for it. You know what I mean? I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Put those in place. So those are your first things you do because I feel like you'll, I want to do something, but you let everything else come in and then take that from you. So put up a goal, make it a challenge for yourself so that you know what you're pushing yourself on your own path. And, and as Stephanie said, making yourself a priority that way. But I think you need to do it in that regards to just kind of push through it and say, Nope, this is my challenge. This is, this is for, you know, not, not saying for me, because I think if you say this is for me, you're going to break all the plans. You know what I mean? But if you just get stubborn and do a challenge, I think you'll 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 do exactly what Stephanie just said. So, my my noisemaker's back. I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> <clears throat> Who'll be next? Lisa, my daughter had a shaman's journey with someone who I know. No who I now have doubts about working solely in the light. I've been wondering if it is advised for me to have her see someone trusted or ensure that encounter has not a deter detriment to her. I work so hard to step out of fear and, and this situation has that feeling creeping back in, especially since it involves my daughter. I hope this question isn't too far off base. Not at all. No, no it's no, not. No, no, no. I think... I think it kind of came in at the right time because looking at my journey and, and things that have come in and what I find really interesting is finally finding the support, finding a group of people, like-minded people who understand all of us have a different calling. And for me, I see both things from the light and both things from the darkness. and. And part of why I am here is to help move those things and to clear space for people. And not everybody operates in that. Some people will tell you it's all love and light and angels. And I'm like, oh, but what's this over here? And so I think where the fear is coming in for you is when we work with a shaman and, and when we're doing our shamanic journey, we're working both sides. And it's not that you are working with the shadows. It's, it's that people are learning that some of those things are there that some of those energies exist on both sides of the veil and i understand that because when we see those things then we have to acknowledge some of those darker parts i feel like you in this case have to really trust your intuition because not everybody is a right fit and that your daughter should trust her intuition on how she's feeling with working with this person. But also within that, look at your fear of this situation. Um, what, what happened within this situation and, and why are you responding it? Is it intuitive fear or is it fear that we've been taught to feel? And so, you know, like in my house, I might see a shadow and, and somebody else might be over and be like, whoa, that freaked me out. I saw this shadow. It was dark. It was scary. Well, no. Okay. Let, let's talk about this and process through this. Just because it was seen as a shadow doesn't necessarily mean it had negative connotations. And so I think there's a couple things that you have to examine, but when it comes down to the very base of it, I would say trust your intuitiveness and, and have your daughter trust her intuitiveness on who feels right to work with. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I, you know, I can't even add to that because it's amazing. It really is amazing. So love that. Who would like to go next? Oh, and Stephanie, the boy said, I called, I apologize. I called you, Charlie. Her name is Charlie, honey. 
I was probably talking to you, Stephanie. <laughs> so, Michelle, do you see anything going on with my health? Thank you. I keep, and I'm not, I'm not a medical intuitive, but I keep feeling like an imbalance. And, and I, I feel like, I feel like a shift, a shift within my energy. And I also feel a pressure across my chest and, and I feel like I'm getting hot. So I don't know if this is part of a, a hormonal imbalance or, but for me, that's how it's coming through. I'm feeling hot. I'm starting to kind of get sweaty and I just, I feel like my energy is off, but I'm going to mostly defer this one to Dayette. Okay. Um, I agree with the imbalance because I'm actually here and I'm getting the imbalance in my ears for some reason. You know what I mean? Almost not like vertigo, but just offset, all stable. Um, I'm also getting um, some, you're going you're gonna to have to let me know, um, Michelle, because what I'm feeling is actually my, it's going to my mind. It's, it's not a confusion, but it just feels as if, you know, more thought process, more, not dizziness. It just feels almost overwhelming in my mind. I don't know how that makes sense, but it feels like it's up front of my mind, not in my brain. And it's going down into my throat and then into my heart center. I don't believe there's anything going on with your heart. So I mean, heart center across the whole thing here. Okay. Um, I do feel like it is an imbalance. I don't think it's so much as an actual health issue as much as it is as waters and maybe looking at vitamins or I may actually hear more minerals needing in your system. So it's almost like um, if you trust yourself, if not go to a doctor and get, you know, get yourself kind of blood work checked. But I feel like you're low or more deficient in some minerals. And when you look, if they check your blood work, it's kind of like you'll see where you're in because I feel like you'll be in the normal parameters, but maybe low on the normal parameters. And that might have to bring you up in that aspect. I also feel like when you're doing this, you have to pay attention to yourself because you really know your body well and being able to bring that in. Cause I'm hearing you do muscle testing or testing of some sort, you know, kind of like, is this good for me? Is this good for me? And being able to bring that back and forth. Um, I do feel like you've been dealing with things with health for quite a while or scares of health. Cause I feel like it's almost like everything is really okay for the most part, but I'm almost fearful of something else coming at me. So it's not like I'm feeling it within my body. It's more like a fear factor coming out at me is what I'm feeling. So um, I do want to tell you and start to clear your throat chakra a little bit. It, not that it's not clear because I mean, the throat chakra itself does feel clear, but I feel like you have to pay more attention to it and allowing yourself to keep you, keeping your inner voice going and act up. Because I also feel like that kind of comes in because all of a sudden I got the slight sore throat that that felt much more like a, you know what, not holding back or like let yourself speak a little bit more. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, Ms. Michelle. But you actually feel pretty okay other than maybe a chiropractor and a massage. More so the chiropractor. Because I can feel that across your mid-back. Like you need to go pow to the back and make it go and feel great. So. Um, doo -doo -doo. Terry T said, is there any rituals you can do for upcoming summer solstice? I'm really bad at this. Cause I'm not, I, I, I'm horrible because I don't follow any of that. Like, I can't tell you what the moon's doing or and I'll have like my cousin and, and she's got a lot of abilities and she'll wish me a summer solstice. And I'm like, Oh, so that's, that's something that I'm really outside of. I, I would say, you know, do what feels right. You want to dance around naked in the woods or wash your stones or do what feels right to you. I think all of, all of these things and these changes that come in really are about bringing in the change. And so whatever feels right to you to welcome that in. I want to go back because Michelle says actually showed some inflammation in my lungs, health issues for over 30, the health issues for over the 30 years. And that makes sense. Um, so what I'm feeling here is probably the lungs are the, I'm feeling it right across here. Okay. Um, I still don't feel like Michelle, like it's, um, I don't feel like it's COPD or anything like that. Inflammation just is like a soreness and just help. Hopefully they can do like, um, I don't know if the doctor's giving you like a prednisone or something to kind of help relieve some of that. Um, and being able to go forward with that. So hopefully the doctor is able to address that for you and make that just a little easier. 
Okay. Um, and I'm going to tell you, if they do do that path, I feel like you need to just kind of watch your immune system for a little bit. Okay. So um, let's go on to, let me see. Um, I believe Gordon's question. I like this one. Here is something, right shoulder had x-ray and ultrasound, nothing found but painful for over a few months. But sorry, I didn't have any other specific fair questions. I had to think of a one. LOL. I love that garden. So what do you feel like this says? <clears throat> you know, I keep getting like a pinching, like kind of under, under my shoulder blade. Like now I want to kind of stretch over and, and lean over the back of the chair and, and try and crack it. And I almost feel like it's, and, and I know he's, he's saying like nothing showing up on the ultrasound, but I almost feel like it's like a deep tissue where I don't know if it needs to be rubbed out or, or chiropractor, but I feel like it's in a really odd spot. Like you can't quite get to it, but I do feel like, you know, I don't want to say a chiropractor cause I don't feel like you can crack it out, but I know sometimes they'll do like the ultrasound treatments with that and, and work out those muscles, but it almost feels like like something kind of pulled and pinched underneath my shoulder blade. Um, I think this is the, you know what? Um, I just weird. Cause every time I've been, I go into it, I feel like I've been nailed in the shoulder. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like not like a physical nail though. It feels more like energetically nailed in the shoulder. You know, initially when I seen the question, I started reading like, Oh my God, that's past life. And I walked away from it. You know, but I feel like it's that coming back in this realm. And I've gotten the opportunity to start talking to Gordon a little bit. And I don't know a lot about him, but starting to get that. So I do know he works within this realm of things. But I do feel like it's it's almost that type of situation. So it feels like an energetic hit. I do feel like it's a mixture of that past life, but something in this lifetime enacting something from that. I don't know if that makes sense, Gordon. But it's kind of like, you know, that cellular memory or the soul memory of it getting, you know, nailing me in this aspect. I do agree with Stephanie that it doesn't feel like it's anything serious. But I do feel that when you're talking about going in and rubbing it and pushing on that, I feel like it's more exploring of that. So I would honestly do some meditating on to what is it that I feel like I've been hit or what? Because it almost feels like if I go into a past life with you, it's almost like you weren't able to continue on something because of a shoulder injury you know, like stopped your work because of this, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> and I almost want to like put a hammer in your hand and just get you sitting there slapping, you know, nailing, like, um, forming metal. And, you know, I don't know what that is, um, the hot fire and all that, but like doing all that. And all of a sudden you can't do your job is what this feels like to me. Like it's, it's an injury from back then and stopped you from doing what you want to do. So, um, that's kind of where I'm feeling at in this. And I do know, I, I, I would believe that you probably like the work you do. You know what I mean? Because obviously you're still doing it. Um, but going forward with it, I would think I would just kind of look at that aspect and see if you can release it energetically. Because I don't know how much is actually physically wrong as more energetic or deep energetic. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. And let's do one more. Sue, my daughter and I started our business this summer. Oh, I love that. My will my daughter and I start our business this summer. I almost feel like there's going to be a little bit of a delay. Um, and and I don't I don't feel like it won't happen. But I feel like there's some more pieces that have to kind of fall into place because spirits like like they're putting up a roadblock sign here. And so if there's a certain angle that you have been approaching this from, I would consider looking out at some of the other angles and, and looking for other ways to come around and, and bring this into fruition. But I almost feel like there's going to be some stalling and some delays. I, I do feel like eventually you guys are going to be able to to pull this together and bring it in. But I don't feel like it's going to be set, you know, right, right at the beginning of the summer um, within your expectation. Because they're showing me like they're showing me a roadblock and it's like, well, you got to choose. Do you want to go this way or do you want to go this way to come around and, and how you want to approach it? So I would just say really look at, at it as a whole 
look at things that you have discussed because I feel like some things have been more in discussion and not acted upon. It's It's been more talked about. So start taking some of the concrete action into doing that. And then I, th I feel like the puzzle pieces will start coming in and then it'll fall into place. I completely agree with you on that 110%. I just, and I, I, I feel like, um, so I, I've been talking to you quite a while. I do believe your daughter's still in college or back in college. And I feel like that's got to finish itself out before going on to a business. Um, not that you couldn't do both. She couldn't do both, but I just feel like it's almost too many irons in the fire. So it's kind of like, you know, do well with your modalities, keep building within your modalities and know that that is going to come. Um, I feel like it's closer to Christmas next year, like this end of this year or going into the beginning of next year. So, so do we have time for one more stuff or I don't know. That pretty quick. It did go pretty quick. It did go quick. How about one more? One more okay. and then we'll call it a day and we'll tell everybody how to find you. Okay. We recently moved into a house. We're having some major house issues now that what we thought was our dream home. Did we make a bad move? Is the energy in our house bad or is there something sort of test? It just feels like things happening. And I know it usually means the universe is trying to get out of our, get you out of the, I hope you're reading this with me because I can't. I am reading. I got it. <laughs> is what is happening here. Is that what is happening here? Um, I want to ask right off the bat, one, why did you force the, the sale of the house or the buy of the house? And two, was it really your dream house? Or are you forcing it to be in the confines of your dream house? Does that make sense to you, stuff Like it does. Feeling like it's not quite your dream house, but you're trying to make it feel like it's your dream house, but really it's missing things or has added things that you didn't want or missing things that you did want. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So it's like for myself, if you're if you're gonna stay with that house, I don't necessarily feel like it's a matter of saying, hey, I gotta leave the house. As much as it might be sitting back and just being honest, going, wait a second, you know, I really wanted this or I really wanted that. And then allowing that to flow and let that come to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I know that's not as easy, especially if you wanted like four bathrooms, you'd have to find a place to put an extra bathroom because I don't feel like you're willing to give up all that, you know, the extra stuff that you might've wanted that you didn't get. But I do feel as if if you walked into it, you're like, you know what? We can switch things around. We can we can do this and just put it on a timeline that it will become exactly everything you wanted. And I think then the house is not going to seem as bad as you think. And I think it'll start to work on the trajectory that you want. I also feel like for some reason you need to talk to the energy of the house because mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't feel like this is a brand new construction. I feel like this is got some. I don't want to say haunted house because I don't feel like it's that. I think it's more imprinted energy onto it, you know, that's just there. And just kind of talk to that energy and say, it's okay if I move a wall. You know what I mean? It's and not that it's going to really care, but you know what I mean? Just kind of speak to the energy and see, see what's there within it as you're walking through it. Because I think you're going to find when you start to work with the energy of that, things are going to go a lot smoother. I completely agree, you know, with what you're saying, Dea. And to me, a house is an energetic field. It's almost like it has this life of its own. And that's really what I was getting to was connecting into the energy of the house. And, and like you said, kind of communicating with it and, and coming in because I do feel like, like the property in the house has quite a bit of history within it. And so, and it sounds weird to people sometimes, but coming in to the house and saying, okay, I'm here to help you. I'm here to, you know, just like people go to the doctor. Houses sometimes need to go to the doctor too. And you're there to help the house. You're there to fix the house. It's not that anything is wrong with what the house is providing you, but you're trying to make it stronger. And I think if you can just kind of communicate with that energy of the house that I feel like you're going to see things are going to start going much smoother. Um, I do feel like, I do feel like there's maybe some past owners of the property that are, are kind of around and maybe don't feel like it, it's being respected 
and and so I think just making peace with the energy of the house, the prior owners, letting them know that you're coming in, you're trying to make things better, you're trying to make the structure sturdier and repair it. I think that's going to go a long way. Like that. Just making peace with the energy of the house, the prior owners, letting them know that you're coming in, you're trying that's to not make me. things better, you're trying to make the structure sturdier. I don't know what the hell's going that's gonna on. Go a long way. Apparently, that needs to be reiterated. So, <laughs> you're one of them to hear again. You're going, you're not talking. What is it? <laughs> there you go. You heard it twice with the horse's mouth. You can't get better than that. <laughs> <clears throat> I love that. Everybody's like, Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> you and me are like, wait a second. Okay. Because yeah. my computer itself just reset everything you just said. See? So hopefully everybody we helped in some way entertained you, whatever. Hopefully that helps. Um, of course, like, okay, that was creepy. <laughs> I know it was, wasn't it? I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Apparently she's a person that needs to hear it twice. I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> Not even talking, just <laughs> spirit works in mysterious ways. I'm telling you. So how can people find you, darling? Well, I will be. So Saturday the 26th, I will be in Rhinelander uh, with you. I believe you're going to be there also. Yes, to the Mind, there. Body, Spirit Fair. So come out, see Dayette and I will be there. Otherwise, I, I do have a Facebook page. It's called Chat with Charlie. And so you can go on there, look at my services, get in touch with me. I love it's pretty it. simple. Yeah. I love it. And we're going to, she's going to be like in a home near you very quick. I'm so, <laughs> I love it. Who doesn't love a sarcastic medium? I mean. I'm telling you, you are just, you are, you've got a beautiful sense of humor. You should have been a cop. I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, so um either way i love it thank you for staying with me to the end everybody you know um and everybody else that came in sorry for a surprise we're doing readings today um we were really going to try to do this by the road but i really thought if i can get home we're going to get yeah. home um and that's what i did i just got four hours of sleep and went there we go here we go you know what i mean so everybody next week i will not be here i will not be here why i will be in florida I will be in Florida. I am taking my granddaughter to Florida, just me and her, four-year-old to Disney World, Epcot Center. That's where I'm going to be. Literally holding on to a little hand saying, where do you want me to go? You, This is your trip. You lead me to whatever mousey ears you want me to go to. So who doesn't want that kind of a trip? You know what I mean? I want that. So why not give it to somebody else? So you'll see me back here in two weeks. Let me see who's here in two weeks because <clears throat> I need to tell people. Or I mess it all up. I might mess it up anyway. Greg Bacon is gonna Bacon is gonna be here next week. You wanna watch that show stuff. Greg is like huge, huge in the paranormal. He does ghost radio. We're gonna bring in some uh he's got some tapes uh or some recordings of different spirit box type things, and Ooh. we're gonna discuss all about the paranormal and his Very life. Exciting. Yeah, like right now, he's like traveling, I think, all over the country doing investigations for the radio show and so Facebook. Jealous. That's amazing. <clears throat> You're going to love it. I'm going to love it. This is so awesome. So, everybody, I it should be snake free there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we already proved, Lisa, it's not snake free there. <laughs> Just going to stay at the front yard gardens. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, which isn't funny because I dreamt about snakes again last night. So. <laughs> Except for somebody was trying to get me over my fears and they put this great big like blonde like albino python on my head and they were trying to get me over my fears and somebody else was trying to get over the fears and they had a great big lizard. And I remember as I put the snake on my, my shoulders, I went, can I hold the lizard? <laughs> we'll start with lizard and go go away to the snake. So, And then they made the snake bite me to think like everything was okay in my dream. Yeah. They had the Paul Python on my shoulders and a little garden snake and bit me in the hand to prove to me I should be over the fear. And I took the snake away from him. I slapped him with the snake and I said, you jerk. I was killed by a snake bike in a past life. That's my fear. And you had to bite me. <laughs> it's like, I was so mad in my dream. It was awful. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. 
So everybody, um, please join me again in two weeks. I'm going to have Charlie back on again. I'm telling you what, this has been lots of fun. We'll Thank you. We'll let you know what's in the works. We'll let mm -hmm. you guys know, okay? Let us know how we work together today. And if we should just learn to be a little bit more sarcastic. Yeah. We just it makes it fun. We need to let that out. Okay, everybody, this is Jet Renee here on School Through Spirit with WLTKDB.com. Bye-bye, everybody. And thank you, Gordon, for watching today. Hoot toot, because I know you...